So today we're talking about these little devils. Every woodworker's nightmare. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So we are actually standing in one of my kilns here and I just opened it up, finished this load of wood and it's hot in here. It was about 135 degrees when I opened the doors. So letting it cool off a little bit and uh, you know, I figured it'd be a good place to shoot this video because it's kind of windy out. So we're kind of ducking out of the wind here. So today we're talking about powder post beetle. A real nuisance to anybody that's a woodworker, uh, has an old home, you know, you've, you've probably seen it. Uh, if you're not familiar, we're going to get into the details of what this thing is, what it does, uh, you know, how to prevent it and how to treat it. But what I've got here, I've got a stack of these maple slabs customer brought me. And this was stuff they had stored in an outbuilding for quite a long time and well that condition is just ripe for power post beetle to infest hardwoods so they brought it to me they're going to try to do something with it and you know they want to use it for a project but rightly so they were afraid to just build with it as is because that would be a problem there's powder post beetle in this wood and if they got it around other wood they'd infest that wood and eventually you know it, it would just ruin their project so they brought it to me to kiln dry and sterilize that's done now this wood is safe to use um, unfortunately you know all these bore holes are left and i guess beauty's in the eye of the beholder uh you know some people think that's rustic some people wouldn't accept it but honestly uh in this case it's not my problem it's their wood so i just uh do what they want me to do so it's sterilized so i'm putting the cart before the horse here with this uh first let's talk about what powder post beetle is it is a tiny tiny little beetle i believe they're about a 16th of an inch long and what they do they lay their eggs in cracks in the wood those eggs hatch they feed on the starches of the wood and they emerge what you see here are emergence holes. That's where the larva bores its way out of the wood. The problem is it becomes a vicious cycle. So that larva matures, lays eggs in the wood, and over and over again. So what you're looking here is multiple generations. They, they thought they had this stored at least 10 years, maybe longer. So this is multiple generations of powder post beetle. Hatching, reinfesting, hatching, reinfesting, and it's a real problem, uh, especially in older homes, you know, that have hardwood beams as, you know, floor joists in the basement, uh, old barns, stuff like that. Uh, over time, these beetles will just keep reinfesting, reinfesting, reinfesting until the wood is actually structurally not sound anymore. They call it powder post beetle because, well, they get in posts and you will often see little piles of sawdust. Uh, now you're not gonna see it here because this wood has been moved, but where this wood had sat for years, I would be willing to bet there were little piles of sawdust. Every one of these emergence holes creates what they call frass, just a little pile of sawdust. Um, it's like powder, hence the name. So they're vicious little buggers and they're there's several different types of powder post beetle. Uh, the main concern to us in the hardwood business is hardwood. There are some that attack softwood. Uh, the one nice thing, they're kind of, they don't interchange. So the variety that goes after softwood won't attack hardwood and vice versa. I do believe there might be one species that goes after both, but I'm not an expert on that. Um, but primarily it's a problem in hardwood they seem in my experience to go after the woods that have a higher sugar content 
maple is uh, is a prime one like you're seeing here hickory ash sassafras it seems to me i've seen them in all types of wood including oak uh, basically all the hardwoods are, are at risk they tend to go after the sapwood more so than the heartwood i imagine that goes back to the sugar content and it's more starchy uh, better for them to feed on so it is an issue you have to be concerned with uh, particularly if you're using reclaimed wood if you're buying air dried wood if you're using wood for a project that you don't really know the source of uh, powder post beetle will not go after green wood so if you have freshly sawn lumber that's safe it may have something like ambrosia beetle or another pest but it does not have powder post beetle where powder post beetle becomes a risk is when you drop below 20 percent moisture content so air dried lumber is a very very high risk because you it's been sitting outside it lost enough moisture that it is susceptible to powder post beetle and if it's left there long enough they will find it but it hasn't been gone through a kiln to kill it so reclaimed lumber like barn wood is a huge risk um, in fact I always tell this story to my customers if you're one of my customers you might have heard this story so forgive me for repeating myself uh, but for the rest of you people call me all the time and they say oh I want to build with this you know do you think I need it sterilized or I'm doing work for them you know and they want something machined and I always say well you probably want to kill and dry that first and they say oh I don't really think I need to you know it's well air dried I'll use it as is well I had a, a customer contact me one time and he, he wasn't a, co a customer before this but uh, he contacted me and said hey I bought this reclaimed wood off of Craigslist or Facebook I don't remember where and he said I built a bed out of it and it was barn wood you know it was supposed to be dry this and that and I built this bed he said my wife and I went to bed the first night in it and we laid down and all we heard was this crunching noise there was beetles in the wood now in this case it was soft wood and it was an actual uh, a beetle I don't know the exact what it was but there was something in it it wasn't powder post beetle but uh, well his wife freaked out he had to tear the bed to pieces he brought it to me in basically furniture pieces that were all taped and labeled so he could reassemble this bed it was a huge headache for him we stuck it in the kiln sterilized it and uh, you know hopefully he got it back together and went on with his life but you know it's one of those things just a little bit of preventative work uh, will save you a big headache so that's what I'm kind of trying to to explain because most people have never heard of this you know most people like those old barn beams and they want to use it as a fireplace mandle or something like that and you know next thing you know they got a, a problem in all their woodwork so some prevention tips for powder post beetle obviously if you're a woodworker or a homeowner don't bring questionable lumber into your home and risk your other woodwork don't bring it into your wood shop and you know risk your your supplies of wood you have in there make sure you know the source where you're buying your lumber make sure it's sterilized in a kiln or otherwise treated and we'll get into that in a second but it's it's all about just keeping barriers you know keeping a sterile barrier so to speak that you're not tracking in pests you know just like anything else um, you know just using some common sense in housekeeping the other big thing you know I've had customers find out the hard way I've had customers heat their wood shops with firewood and they never really put two and two together and then they come to me and say hey this lumber has powder post beetle and one case in particular you know I actually sawed and dried a lot of his lumber and we were thinking about it and I said well I took your green logs saw them put them right in the kiln I said it's impossible for that lumber to have powder post it doesn't work that way I said it's, it's got to be infecting it on your end and we, we did some back and forth and we finally realized he had a bunch of firewood stored in his wood shop and closer inspection firewood have powder post beetle 
So, you know, you really got to think about all those things. So prevention is like most things. Uh, I'm blowing the kiln door open there. Uh, prevention, like most things, is worth its weight in gold. What happens if you have something that gets powder post beetle? You really have two viable options. The first is what we did here. Brought it back to me, stuck it in the kiln. If you heat the wood over 130 degrees for 24 hours, and I always try to go above and beyond that, both in temperature and duration, you will kill the larva in the wood. You will sterilize it. They cannot survive past that temperature. So that's what we do. And that's been successful. It's proven that works. Uh, sometimes, like in the case of barn beams that are in an old barn, you're not picking that up and moving it to a kiln. Uh, the next solution is borax. If you spray a solution of borax on the wood, it will not kill the larvae in the wood, but what happens when they emerge, it will kill them. If you have that film of borax sprayed onto the wood and you can prevent that generation from reinfestation, re now you're still always at risk of a new crop coming along down the road and, and reinfesting, but that will stop them. Uh, you can make up your own solution with borax. There's commercial products on the market, Timbor, Solubor, Boracare, uh, you know, there are three that stick in my mind. Uh, you, you can buy them, mix them up, put them in a garden sprayer and just spray all the surfaces. But the key there is you have to get all the surfaces. Uh, anything left untreated is, you know, gonna defeat the purpose. So depending on what you're doing, that's possibly a solution. Um, you know, easier said than done. Uh, fumigation is also a, a solution. I'm not really familiar about that. With that, you're gonna have to call in a professional. They're somehow gonna have to seal off the wood and use whatever product they're using to fumigate. That will get into the holes. Obviously, because it's a vapor, it will get into the holes. And as far as I understand, that will kill the larva. So those are really your three options to treat powder post beetle. None of them are really that convenient. Nobody wants to bring this giant stack of maple slabs back to get it kiln dried, but you know, if, if that's the situation you find yourself in, those are your options. Um, just be careful because this is an extreme case here. That's why I wanted to make this video to show you while I have this here, because this is extreme. Keep your eyes peeled when you're sorting through your wood, when you're working with your wood, and just because you don't see these exit holes does not mean you don't have a powder post beetle infestation. These take several months to a year to develop. So, you know, you may very well have larvae in that wood that has not emerged yet, the first generation, and you just don't know it yet. So always be careful with that too. Um, the bottom line is just know the history of your wood you know whether you cut it yourself how long it's been sitting out air drying or if you bought it from somebody you know hopefully they're a reputable dealer and you know they'll either tell you it's only air dried you know or uh you know yes it has been kiln dried and kept in a sterile area uh for me personally here no air dried lumber ever enters my kiln dried storage space it just doesn't happen uh, if it's air dried it stays outside when it comes out of the kiln it goes directly into my kiln dried storage space where i keep my retail and wholesale lumber uh, i don't believe in mixing and mingling that's just a recipe for disaster so you know that's that's how i do things here um you know if you have any concerns about your supplier, don't be afraid to ask them. Uh, but no, it's just a real menace. Uh, it's just one of those other inconvenient things you have to deal with. Uh, the one other tip I will give you, if you have to store lumber in, let's say you have a loft of a barn or a garage or an attic or whatever the case may be. It's not climate controlled. You can't seal it all that well. There is one thing you can do that is beneficial for both moisture and bugs. Lay down plastic, 
like plastic drop cloth, like the four mil or six mil, you know, pl clear plastic, uh, you know, painters, uh, plastic, stuff like that. Lay it down, stack your wood on top of that, wrap everything, wrap it 100%. Uh, don't leave the bottom unwrapped, you know, make sure it, you create a full envelope that you're wrapping that stuff totally, tape all your seams, that wood will store there indefinitely. It, uh, it will not pick up moisture, it will not get a bug infection as long as everything's sealed. And you'll keep the mice out of it as long as the mice don't chew through the plastic. Those buggers could possibly do that. Bugs won't chew through plastic. So that's a little tip. I've had to resort to that in the past before I had as much storage space. Um, it's less than ideal. But if you know you're gonna put lumber up for a while and you're not gonna have to touch it, that's your best preventative measure for storage uh, if you don't have a dedicated, clean, climate-controlled space. So that's about all I got on the Powder Post Beetle. Hopefully I taught you something, uh, you know, hopefully uh, it saves you some headache down the road. Obviously I do offer sterilization services here. If, uh, if you need it, uh, you can give me a shout. We can talk about that. Uh, but hopefully uh, this will save you the headache and you won't need it. So thanks for watching guys. Have a good one.